Hickok 45 here. I ain't a police, but I've got a police service six. Can I shoot it? Is it legal? Well, let's shoot something. How about that guy right there, right away? <laughs> oh yeah. How about that? Help us. And I, I, I am not doing anything illegal. Even though this is called the uh, police service six, it's uh, legal for me to shoot it. Uh, some of you people just are uh, kind of strange. And uh, <laughs> you believe what I say sometimes. Isn't it pretty though, for a Ruger? Ooh, that was a cut, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it is. It's a, it's a nice looking gun. And I, if I brought this out in the Sunday video, I think I did maybe right after I got it, but we've not done a video with it. And I told you in the first video, one of them with the, uh, I don't know, either the Security 6 or the uh, Police Trade-In Police Service 6 we did, that we borrowed from Buzz, it was stainless. Uh, during one of those videos, I told you that this is the model I want. I want the Police Service 6 with the non-adjustable sights in stainless is what I said I wanted. So why do I have this? Well, I couldn't find a stainless one in the condition I wanted, really. Uh, and I ran across this, I guess it was Gunbroker. And, you know, it's nice shape and everything. And I could just envision these ivory grips, <laughs> ivory colored grips on it. And uh, which I ordered right after I bought the gun. And I, I kind of like that. So I'm happy with the blue one. Okay. So pretty cool. Told you I needed one. And I have it. So this is the Security 6 version I want, the Police Service 6. And here it is. And uh, we've done one, of course, on the stainless that uh, police trade in. And uh, this is, that's why this is a chapter two, even though this is the first video we've done with this, unless I did bring it out. I think I did in a Sunday video. Got some of my hand loads, and I got some federal ammo. And uh, it's kind of a cold day, so I don't know if how these uh, magnums I'll shoot. These hot, now mine are magnum, but they're more of a moderate magnum. But it's just a shoot video and to enjoy this gun. And to, if some of you don't know, if, if you are so rude that you don't watch the Sunday morning shoot arounds, you might not know I actually finally got this. Actually, I've had it for months. So I thought I'd bring it out and do a chapter two, enjoy it, let you enjoy it. Because a lot of you like firearms. I figured that out, just like me. Nice gun, nice gun. Uh oh target-rich environment, too. Oh, man, let's magnemize that guy. Let's magnemize that uh, two-liter right there. Woo! I know when we need to magnemize that other red one because it's, uh, it's sprung a leak and it's not really uh, full. It may need a magnum in order to blow it up. Ooh, oh, wow, we threw it. Hit the steel. Let's see if we can put one on the gong. All right, I heard it hit. We have two bullets left. Well, I guess not counting my ammo. There's a faded two liter. That's what happens, just for y'all's information. No charge, but when you leave a two liter out in the sun. All that fructose corn syrup turns white. <laughs> wow, this hurts. It does. You heard those things hurt more when it's cold. I think I got that line from uh, a Clint Eastwood movie. Uh, Clint Eastwood movie. I can't remember the title. But things do hurt more when it's cold. <laughs> yeah, it's all 357. Don't have to worry about keeping it straight. Oh man. Yeah, these are these are nice uh, revolvers. I confessed in uh, one of those early videos that I I uh, was uh, negligent in not owning these back in the 70s, 70s, and. Uh, find it quite interesting how they come apart and how they're made you know I, I was into the old guns even then though you know uh wow you think about it, in the 70s when i was uh, first out of college and buying some firearms the uh you know smith wesson been around since 1850s <laughs> so i was a gun snob right at the beginning right and uh you know ruger had only been around about 20 years and then uh, this firearm had just come out and some others. So, so there were these new fangled firearms. They just didn't look right. Yeah. <laughs> didn't look right. No, I didn't want any part of them. Oh. No, it's, uh, turning that one to sawdust. Let's put one of these on the gong. Might hear it better. I 
Ja, hit it. Yeah, all right. Let's try, uh, there's a, what a bowling pin. Oh, I missed the bowling pin, hit the cowboy. <laughs> well, you have to be careful what you're aiming at. Nothing like plinking with a revolver. I give you all that lesson, preach at you all the time, but there's really uh, no shooting to me that's more fun than just uh, coming out with a revolver, plinking around. The fact that it just holds six is not a problem. You know, you can only shoot six at a time, <laughs> but uh, you get to load it more. That's part of the fun, see? Sliding those torpedoes into the chambers and sliding out the empties, part of the fun. So you get to have more fun. I think I can uh, pick off that little two liter down there. Yeah. How about that place? Got a nice trigger, didn't mean to shoot so soon. Tell you. Got a very nice trigger. Uh, really wasn't on target yet, quite when I uh, shot one of those. So, pretty sweet. All right, let's shoot some more magnums. So what if it's cold? It won't hurt you, just me, right? 158 grain. Yeah, man. Jacketed soft point. That's what that's called for those who don't know. It's got a soft point, not a hollow point, but it's got some lead showing. That's usually what you have when it's called a soft point. Because if it's full metal jacket, the point is not necessarily going to be too soft. It's going to be copper instead of lead. The lead's there, but it's under the copper. No charge. All right. Oh, man. We've got magnums. Well, let's see. There's a water jug that I'll be shot. Okay. It ought to blow up a little bit <laughs> yeah. ouch blow up a bowling pin <laughs> you know the, when you got a lot of recoil the least little thing like my ring wrapped around against my finger right there on one of those shots, it boom, it just, it's like it tries to rip the skin off your finger. It's just amazing what more power will do. You have to be ready for it. Let's try old Mr. Hogg. Boom, good shot. That should have brought him down. How about those bowling pins? You can shoot bowling pins right up close. <laughs> I hit him, believe it or not. There's not much, I'll shoot the top of it. There's just no wood left in him. Except up there. <laughs> He's like sawdust. Boom. Yeah. He's really in bad shape. Well, there's some left. But that's why you see sometimes when you hit him, he doesn't even move. You need to replace him, don't we? So uh, that's probably enough shooting. See those empties in there? That's what an empty case looks like once the primer's been hit. Uh, so let me take those out. So I, I'm really pleased. I, I like this configuration. Uh, I, I like stainless as well, but uh, I thought that just looked pretty nice. And with those grips, uh, they're, you know, they're just some polymer, but they look kind of nice. And four inch, just uh, the simple sights that I talk about a lot. Uh, again, you new shooters, uh, if you haven't seen a lot of our videos, even though you, if you see a firearm like this, could be a Smith or a Taurus or anything, uh, and you, oh wow, there's no sight on the back of that thing, there's no big sight, I can't adjust the sights, that's not necessarily a, a, a deal killer at all. Pick it up and look down the sights and see what the sight picture looks like. This has a nice square notch, I can see the front sight just fine, especially with a little white paint on it. And it's probably going to be pretty much on. I, I don't think I've ever had a firearm with sights like that, that it didn't shoot, you know, straight on, really. Uh, and so if you have a good sight picture, yeah, it's probably okay, depending on what you're going to use it for. If you're going to be shooting a lot of different weight bullets, a lot of different distances, and a lot of long range stuff or something, 
and you want to be able to raise and lower the rear sight, then that one's a little hard to raise and lower unless you have a good file or a grinder, okay? So uh, anyway, but uh, it's not a deal killer. I, in fact, I like it because it's a snag-free, kind of, well, except for the hammer, <laughs> but it's nice. So anyway, my uh, police service six, uh, I'll bring it out again on a Sunday or sometime or with some other grouping of revolvers that we're, we're shooting. But I, I just really like the, the Ruger service six, a nice, nice pistol. Again, they had the uh, security six, the service six, and the speed six. And uh, this is pretty nice. Glad you came along today. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to Ballastall.com, TalonGunGrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.